So Jamie and I have always been into healthy food. We've always been into the environment and restaurants are the leading cause of um, uh, detriment to the environment. The way we raise our food, the way things are packaged, the way things are processed, the way, things restaur the way restaurants waste food, um, waste resources, it's, it's quite shocking. And I knew I didn't want to be part of that whole restaurant um, stigma of, of just abusing mother nature. So several years before that, Jamie and I got into this healthy, holistic, natural, more real food approach. Some people call it farm to table. Some people call it holistic. There's several different names for a green food, eco food, green food. So we opened and we said, we want to honor our belief system. We have a strong passion and hopefully whatever you're doing, your business wise, you have a very strong passion for it. So I knew that opening up a standard restaurant, I'd been a chef for years and I'd seen what happens in the restaurant hotel business. And I was ashamed of what my colleagues were doing. I was really ashamed. I was even ashamed of some of the places I worked at, what they were doing. And it was frustrating. I said, there's no way that I want to follow those footsteps, but I still want to cook food. I still want to cook good food. I want to cook, cook gourmet food. I still want to be that, that chef who's doing the right thing on all levels. So back in 1999, when we were in Colorado, Jamie and I uh, had, a, I was a partner in a restaurant out there. And we, Jamie and I, that was where we had our daughter in 1998. When our daughter was born, things changed. We were like, okay, we've screwed ourselves up really bad. Now we're responsible for a child. We really better start making some changes to move forward so we can lead by example and we don't screw our children up. Uh, I was 28 and I was on five, six medications. I was about 250 pounds. I was miserable. I had asthma my whole life. Jamie had asthma her whole life. And I was like, enough's enough of this. And we just buckled down and there's no magic bullet for health. We all know that. It takes hard work, it takes exercise, it takes eating right, it takes positive thinking. There's a lot of different things that encompass uh, healthy well-being. And a lot of people were just into, here's a pill, here's a silver bullet, here's this. And when I went to the doctor at 28 and he told me I needed cholesterol medication, I said, there's no way I'm taking it. I'm not taking these medications. I'm on enough medications. And the doctor goes, no, you have to. And I convinced the doctor to give me one month to figure out how to get off my meds or how not to take the meds. And I kind of knew what I was doing because I wasn't stupid. I was in the food business and I saw the food that I was eating, the food that I was serving. I knew there was a massive disconnect. The transparency wasn't there, the, the way food was being processed and, and just the food that was, even at the nicest restaurants you can possibly imagine, what they were doing was shocking. And 30 days later, I went back, got my blood work done, and he said to me, my doctor, he goes, I don't know what you did, but the medication wouldn't have even worked that well. So that started the whole transformation of my culinary career and my mission, my story, my passion, because now it was about how do I take the same food that I'm serving to myself at home, her and I, and to our kids, and give it to you, right? I didn't want double standards. I felt bad about having double standards. There's no way I can go to work every day and not share my values to my guests, to the people that are providing my income. So that was the light bulb. It all changed. We started doing farm tours in Colorado. We met a farmer that wouldn't eat his own potatoes because they spray neurologically damaging chemicals on potatoes. And I said, man, the world needs to know this. Why, why don't more people know this? And why would I serve his potatoes? I said, we said to the guy, I said, what do you do with your potatoes? Well, I mean, what do you do for potatoes? He goes, I ate my neighbor. He grows organically. And we went and visited the neighbor. And then all of a sudden, our minds just opened, our passion started going, and that's really how it all started, it was because we just were concerned about what was happening. So we opened, flash forward to 2003, we opened a Roma Time Bistro. We're like, okay, we're dead set on our passion, this and that, let's move forward. The neat thing is, our passion keeps growing and encompassing more pockets and more pockets and more pockets. I have something that's called ecolectic cuisine. And ecolectic is a, uh, the term that I coined myself. And it's a way to do business in a green fashion and produce and support independence. And it's really the whole picture of how you do business. And when that dawned on me, um, I was talking to a farmer. Has anybody ever read Fast Food Nation? Fantastic book, Fast Food Nation, 1998 or so, 1999. And um, the guy who hung himself in the book, Jamie had actually worked for the guy who hung himself. 
He hung himself because there was no hope left on the farm. The farm was, that was it, no hope. I ended up doing business with his brother, Jay. And I sat down with 10, 15 chefs. I got 10, 15 chefs together in a room and we invited all these farmers in. And we looked at the farmers and we said, we have $5 million worth of purchasing power on this side of the table. What can you guys do for us? This was in Colorado Springs, pre farm to table movement. Sure, Alice Waters was doing stuff and Rick Bayless, but there was no farm to table movement back then. And the farmer's eyes lit up. We had this great, this great relationship. We all of a sudden now, was, this whole farm to table in Colorado Springs was really, really thriving. And Jay came up to me, whose brother had hung himself, and said to me, Marcus, because of what you've done, my kids now have hope on the farm. He goes, I want my kids to stay on the farm. They're gonna go to college. But he goes, five years ago, get the hell off the farm. This is not for you. He goes, now the farm is viable. And when I figured out that doing business was not about only the people sitting at the table having a good meal, but it was the people that I was buying from that were having the same experience as the people sitting at the table, that's when it happened. And I said, let's move forward. Let's, let's do this. This is really what cooking's about. This is being satisfied, self-fulfilled, and the passion just bloomed from there.